Well, no, that's all. Why, why should I bother? In that case, my son. I should you just, just told us. You just told us why. I mean, so hard, we're trying to get more boys chance. like you into universities. And, and no, you, you don't get it, do you? I, oh, I do. You no, you don't, Mister Brian. You okay. do not get it. So. What don't you understand about this sentence? What don't you understand? You know, you, you, you we must try to get more boys you're, like you. You know you're being a, a canny oh, linguist. Man. You know what I mean. I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, really? We want to get you're, more you're, boys you're, like you're, you're you into... Right, you've just Mr. explained Brian. why, Harry. I don't, listen, I think you need to have a bit of a light down. Right? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, take, take the and, pill. And, and, and again, don't, don't tell your lad that you don't think he's bright. Seriously, that wouldn't be helpful. How strange. <laughs> Becky's in Farnborough. Becky, what would you like to say? Yo, by Hi, the way, I Becky, just... you can call me James, by the way. You don't have to call me Mr. <laughs> O'Brien. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Um, but I just wanted to offer my perspective because of my context of I came from a state school, comprehensive school. It's an amazing comprehensive school in Bakewell in Derbyshire. Oh, lovely. Um, but I'm married to an old Etonian. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I say yeah. that just to qualify. Some of my best friends are old Etonians, so that was just a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> gag. Sorry. Um but we met at, met at Oxford. Yes. Um, so you can kind of see the leveller there a little bit. Yes. But um, I just... Hey, can um, I ask you I a mean, cheeky I, I, question I, before we carry on? Yeah. Would, would, your, uh, would, would your husband have got into Oxford if he hadn't gone to Eton? Um, I think he would. He's very, he's very bright. I, I would okay. say he's, he's, he's bright. And interestingly, one of your previous callers was talking about other disadvantages like, like dyslexia. And he's... Very dyslexic, okay. um, and um, definitely not shy. But <laughs> no, very I've never met a shy Etonian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I mean, I was talking to a producer about what what you could do to sort of level the field at, at university yes. um, entrance and such. And the um, she wasn't that interested in what I had to say because I think what I was suggesting was quite complex. I was talking about because I'm also an ex teacher. Um, in, a, in a state school in North London, and um, well, you're perfectly my, qualified my, for this. And just, just give me then the bare bones of how you would find the students that would really benefit from this sort of uh, pursuit of, of of a more equitable system. The only, the only way I could think about it is that you would have because you need an objective measure of some sort. Yes, of like, course. Like the current grading system, um, because that can find people who are bright whether whatever school they came to or went to but um maybe having a point system alongside that where they would take into account your parental income your parents income mm. things like um your ethnic background the school you went to um maybe how much progression you've made through school and that would give you a score mm. and then the universities would see your I know predicted grades or your your final grades alongside a score and if you had a certain score and you were say a b rather than an a then then universities would be obliged to look at look at you as a b student rather than an a student it's very complex but that's why we have a department of education to work these yeah things well through. yeah exactly yeah. that but equally we mustn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good which oddly enough speaking of the department of education is, is a phrase i think i first came across when michael gove uttered it who's not held in the highest regard by Many teachers, but it, but that, that's the point, isn't it? If it's a little bit better or a little tweak of improvement, then it's probably worth looking at or worth pursuing. Just because you can't come up with a with a gold standard, completely detailed explanation, a foolproof explanation of exactly how you would deliver epic amounts of fairness and um, equitability, doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Yeah, absolutely, and it's and you know the power of education is is so great at, at bringing people out of poverty, deprivation, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's I mean, the thing, my, isn't it? I, I've been doing my family tree recently and realised my great-great-grandfather died in the workhouse. <laughs> and then my grandfather was went to a grammar school in Manchester, it was a, a state one, yeah. and became a banker and, and set, you know, my dad up for sort of middle-class life as such. So, you know, that education that's and learning incredible. and things were a priority in my, in my life as yes. such from my parents. And, and and for its own sake as well, as well as for the rewards it can bestow, that seems to be something we're slightly losing sight of, or at least this political generation seems, when they talk about degrees that don't increase your earning potential and things like that, it's both. Mm -hmm. You have to have both sides. Yeah, absolutely. 
Thank you, Becky. I, I, Thank I, you. No, that was that was that was lovely. I mean, all all angles covered, really. Your background, your 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 experience as a teacher, and then the sort of educational privilege that your husband enjoyed, comparable to mine. Although, I, actually, dyslexia is an interesting thing. I, I'm almost certain that at private schools it gets spotted and and accommodated and addressed a lot more than it does at, at many state schools, not all state schools. Let's go to Wolverhampton next. Ben's there. Ben, what would you like to say? Thank you there, James. Um, first time caller. Welcome. Um, just a couple of thoughts on this. Um, first one, um, I, I, I am on your topic here, but I don't believe that teaching is better in private schools. What I believe is the resources are there. Yes, for sure. For bright kids yeah. to reach their potential. And, and for um, unbright kids. And for unbright and kids. I don't think it's so important for kids to go to Oxford necessarily because the teaching isn't necessarily better. Sure. It's just... The, you know, the resources are in place for people to be... This isn't successful. about Oxford. This is about all universities. This is about... Well, well absolutely. Yeah. But um, second point would be that um, I think that students are looked at holistically at interview. What I don't like is what you suggest about a student getting a B from a state school being brighter than a student getting an A at a private school. Because what I think that does... Is it? I was saying this to your producer. I believe that that lets the government off the hook, improving state schools. We, what we uh, want, it, it can is do. For private schools We're doing to perfect. Not be necessary. Perfect enemy. I completely agree. That's actually how the conversation began at the top of the hour, suggesting that that, that is the world that I would rather inhabit, but I don't. Uh, to be honest, I, uh, you might be right. I use that because even though I'm now ancient and decrepit. I'm just thinking of me, Ben. I'm just thinking if I hadn't gone to the school that I went to, I would not have got the grades that I got, but I'd still be me. I'd still be as, as clever or as thick as I am. I'd still be as potentially, I'd be the same person, but I know for a fact that if I'd gone to different schools, I wouldn't have, I mean, largely because I was quite a naughty child and, and the discipline side of things and, and the not being able to get away, not being able to opt out. So that's all, that's the reason. Are you not taking away some accountability for yourself there? Well, no. What do you mean? Do you not not think that, I mean, uh, I'm saying this as a teacher. Go on. Um, I believe that it's my job to give my kids the tools they need to succeed. But it's up to the kids whether or not they take those tools. Yeah, but you see, at my school it wasn't. At my school you had no choice. Well, precisely, and, and I... That's something... And that's that something my parents paid for. Parents. I'd have disappeared. I, but, but I don't agree with parents doing that because I think, ultimately, um, if a kid wants to succeed, it should be on that kid to... Oh, to people, it's heavy. To that, put the work in to maybe get it, Maybe to it should be, but that's why parents pay school fees in order to have, you know, fewer gaps through which their child can disappear, fewer metaphorical trees that they can hide behind, fewer desks that they can sort of hide under that i mean that's just true and and you know there's two three four different conversations in this hour but the the one about the world we'd rather live in is the least helpful it's it's very much the conversation about the world we do live in um but thank you and and i should just trying to work out that it's one minute after 12 and it's mystery hour next so sorry there's a full switch i hate that a bit a little bit of me still hates moving on to something new when the switchboard is still full but guess what there'll be more a levels next year This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, Mystery Hour with James (laughs) O'Brien. I'm a bit of a doofus sometimes. And there were a lot of people waiting to talk about the A-level story, but of course there were also quite a few people ringing in to get in early on Mystery Hour because this is now your weekly opportunity to achieve the sort of satisfaction not ordinarily available anywhere else in the uh, On Your Radio dial. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. You should know how it works by now. All that's changed, if you haven't been tuning in for a while, is that there's now actually a board game to go along with the radio entertainment, and you can win one by being brilliant, by being simply my favourite contributor to this week's Mystery Hour, and you will win a a brand spanking new Mystery Hour board game featuring my slightly old photograph of me, actually. I look quite young and and chipper. But anyway, it's all yours um, if you are my favourite contributor. You can find the full terms and conditions at lbc.co.uk. Find out more about the game at mysteryhour.co.uk. And if you're new to it, I think it's fair to say you're in... Well, you're certainly in for a surprise and you're probably in for a treat. Should we crack straight on? Should Should we just do it from straight out of the box, straight out of the blocks? 
Yeah, you're not allowed to look anything up. That's all. So if you hear someone else ask a question, you think, oh, well, I'll Google that and get on the radio and win a game. No, uh, my antennae for people who've done that, even then they know that they're not allowed to, is pretty well tuned. So there's no excuse for not knowing that you weren't allowed to do that because I've just told you. Uh, Seth is in St. John's Wood. Seth, question or answer? It's a question, James. Carry on, Seth. These astronauts in space, particularly yes. in the International Space Station, they stay in orbit for weeks, for months. And whilst they're there, their weight is very closely, their, their, their health is very closely monitored from Earth. Yes. Uh, including heart, uh, heart rate, yes, blood pressure, all the rest. Yes. Now, the question is, how is their weight monitored if it is monitored? It must be because uh, weight is one of the key parameters when you go into the GP or go for your annual checkup. They make it you is. Just see. So when they stay for, we know that there is muscle wastage in space. There's considerable weight loss in space, mm. but, but they're there for weeks and months. So how is their weight monitored in a state of weightlessness? Oh, that's a, I love the way you phrased that at the end. How is weight monitored in a state of weightlessness? That's philosophy. What? Is that philosophy or physics? <laughs> well, I used to love physics, but uh, <laughs> this has been bugging me, this question. Uh, that's just bugging me now. How is weight monitored in a, in a state of weightlessness? There's no gravity, so how do they know how much yeah. you weigh? That's a lovely yeah. question, sir. A perfect way to kick things off. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Eight minutes after 12 is the time. Richard is in Berkhamstead. Richard, question or answer? Uh, question. Carry yeah, on. Question. Carry on. Carry on. Um, Carry on. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, uh, this, is, this is about freezing a, a, a loaf of uh, sliced bread. When you take Did it you hear the, the last? Did you hear the last question? Yeah. Right. How do you Why? weigh yourself in a state of weightlessness? And now you've got a question about frozen sliced... I mean, I'm teasing you because this is why I love Mystery Hour. We move, we segue effortlessly from a curious <laughs> amalgam of philosophy and physics into a question about your blooming breakfast. Go on. Yeah, OK, there you go. <laughs> when, you, when you take the loaf out the, when yes. you take the, loaf out the freezer, yes. uh, you'll find that the moisture in each slice has leaks to the same side of each slice. And so that if you separate them, you'll see that one side of the uh, of the slice is absolutely bone dry, where the other side has got ice crystals on it. Well, all, the all the way down the loaf? The, all the way down yeah, the loaf? All, yeah, on the same side. And you want to know that why? That's my query. You want to know why? Yeah. Well, I'd, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It'd yeah, well, I'll matter of uh, Lord Copper. I... I just want to picture it. I'm so it's, it's, I've got a slice of bread and it's bone dry on one side and it's got frozen water on the other side and that holds true all the way down the loaf. It's not because the top slice is, is not got no. another slice next to it. It holds no, no. true all the no. way down the loaf. Yeah, you got it, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm not personally familiar with that, that I've ever clocked that. It rings a vague bell now you mention it, but there it is. Okay, well, yeah, I like that question, actually. Um, Niall is in Bridge North. Niall, question or answer? Uh, it's a question, please, James. Carry on. So, when I'm at home, I work from home, um, I need some music or some sort of background noise to concentrate best and focus. Now, some people I know need silence. So why is that? Why do some of us need music to concentrate best and focus? I've been doing, others... uh, yeah. Are you sure it's true? I mean, it's not, I mean, you really do notice if it's, if it's not, if you've got not nothing in the background, you can't concentrate. Yeah, my mind seems to wander, and to use the phrase that science is a bit deafening in my mind. So yeah. having having a little bit of a tune in the background really so, does help, and obviously having the James O'Brien show in the background also does help. Does it? That it doesn't distract yeah. you? No, no, not really. No. no. I don't, so really, you're just describing me as background noise here, Niall. <laughs> White noise, yeah, potentially. Okay. No. Well, uh, you know, it's a living, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm fascinated in it. Your phone line's a bit clicky, so I'll, I'll take the question and, and, and thank you for it. But I'm fascinated by this because it's a parent, it's a parent-child conversation as well in that I'm absolutely adamant that I can't revise unless I've got music on. And my dad was absolutely, mum would be absolutely adamant that that's ridiculous. You can't concentrate at all if you've got that racket on in the background. And I've had the same with my with mine. It's come full circle. So you can't be revising. You, 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 so, well, that's not music. That's just noise. I haven't quite reached that stage yet. But I, I think I recognise what Niall says, actually. And, and it means there are perhaps two types of brain. 
one that concentrates better with background noise and one that concentrates worse. Why? Phillips in Newport on the Isle of Wight. Philip, question or answer? It's a question, James. Carry on. Um, the ever-increasing incidence of air rage, do airlines um, sue guilty air rage passengers through the civil courts for the huge losses airlines incur following a plane being held up on the apron for hours or were still being diverted mid-flight to an unplanned airport. As in, I, I mean, I, I don't know, pursue the actual passenger for, for lost revenues. Absolutely. I mean, in, apparently it costs thousands and thousands well, of, of pounds. Of course it for, must do. Yeah. And uh, I, I've been in, a witness to two incidents in the last 12 months. One Have involving. You? Yep. Gosh, go two, on, tell me more. Well, two women fighting on a, on a plane at Gatwick uh, on the ground. Um, they were both drunk um, before they got on the plane, and we were still on the ground. And I put put it down to the lack of staff around to supervise possibly drunk passengers, which yes. takes us back to the Brexit situation, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you bring it into everything. I hate people like you bringing Brexit into everything. It's so outrageous. Yes. <laughs> what, I, I, um... knew, I knew you'd like me. And the second incident was a man mid-flight who clearly had mental health issues. Oh, and... They were talking about diverting the plane to um, a strange airport. Right. Luckily, they didn't have to, but that would have cost thousands. And thousands well, they wouldn't of probably pounds. come after him if it was if it was medical. It would, would rather than something that you could actually get prosecuted yeah. for. But true, it's an interesting. True. No, I like. I mean, it's it's a, it's an interesting question. What did they do with the fighting women? Well, I don't know. They were removed and arrested. That's what um, I meant. They took them off the plane, and then the plane took off. That's right. But Gosh. it would be a huge deterrent. If air rage passengers knew that not only could they be arrested, but they be, they could lose thousands and thousands of pounds through the civil courts. Yes, but what, what what recourse is taken? I shall find out for you, Philip. Thank you. I like that. I mean, up to a point, it would it would be a huge deterrent because these are not people who've sat there and <laughs> run through the pros and cons of having a massive wobbly on on a plane. And as you point out, as you remind us, they're almost certainly three sheets to the wind as well, which uh, history t teaches us doesn't necessarily uh, make cost-benefit analyses helpful or, or, or likely to happen. But, yeah, I, would, I mean, I think other passengers would quite like the idea as well of the, the, the disruptive one getting a proper punishment. Kate's in Wokingham. Kate, question or answer? It's a question, please. Carry on. Hello. Um, Hello. When, you, when, you do, when they set a Sudoku, how do they know that it's going to be an easy one or a difficult one to solve? Because it's not about how many numbers they leave in it, because they can have the same numbers of leaving in it, because it's a really difficult one or a really easy one. How, yeah. how do they do that? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. Isn't it? And, I love yeah, and that kind of, kind of put can a person do it, or does it have to be a computer? And kind of, did they do to do? Yeah, 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 you're only allowed computer? one. You're only allowed one Sorry. question. Sorry. So, a week. So, so, well, since I've done Sudoku's, I, I do the spelling bee now, and and, and Wordle oh, yeah. and things like that. I do the more wordy ones. Um, is is it? Is it? Are we certain that there's not just a smaller number of numbers in the boxes at the beginning of a hard one? No, I don't think so. No, I no, I really don't think it. No, it isn't. Um, it's something okay. else than that. Something else than that. Okay, you one hundred percent certain. You know, I haven't looked anything up, but I. I no, but do you do? You do a lot of Sudoku. You do. You do 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 Sudoku. You do do Sudoku. You do do Sudoku enough to have have a proper palette of experience on this one. Yes, I do. I do do. I do do Sudoku. I shall try and find out for you. I do do Sudoku. Collins in Orpington. Colin, question or answer? Hi, James. Question. Carry on, Colin. Uh, um, why is a kangaroo court called a kangaroo court? Ooh, that's a good one. I mean, not, I mean what it is is a, is, a, is a court that has no yeah. sort of formal justification or, 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 or a sort of official standing. But why kangaroo? Even, yeah. Even, even even when I thought of it the other day, I thought, what, what, I mean, because I obviously don't know the answer, and I no. thought, what could it be? One, one I thought, on. is it anything to do with it being jumped up? That sounds a bit daft, even, obviously, kangaroos jump. Yeah. And then the only other one was, obviously, there's that story from, I don't know whether that was a true story, where they supposedly hung a monkey in Hartlepool. That might be an apocryphal story. Mm. But did they, in Australia, end up... Doing something similar with a kangaroo? Yeah, is it, I have is... no idea. Anyway. Is it is it uh, kangaroos punch like 
for no reason. Is that I don't no kangaroo? They punch. Well, they used to put them in boxing matches. They, no, I know they? they did. I know they did. It's like a kangaroo yeah. court would be like being up against. No, it's not going to work either. Is this a good one? This isn't it? Yeah, I like it. It might. I mean, yeah. maybe nobody. Don't know. Nobody knows. Don't need to know. No. Might get filed under that. But if anyone does know, why is it a I kangaroo think... court? It's the origin of the phrase, really. Kangaroo court, isn't it? I want to Google it? I thought it'd be better to find out on this program. Very so. nice. And of course, nobody else is allowed to Google it either. We are celebrators of knowledge on this program. So, kangaroo courts, do 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 sudoku, airplane diversions, music and focus, frozen bread, and weighing astronauts. It is seventeen minutes after twelve. Mystery Hour on LBC with James O'Brien. 12.19 is the time you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where Mystery Hour continues. How do you weigh an astronaut in a weightless atmosphere? Uh, why, when you take a frozen loaf of sliced bread out of the freezer, is the distribution of ice crystals identical on every slice? One side is dry, and, and, and it's the same side. You, you understand that question. Why do some of us find it easier to concentrate with a bit of background? noise or music and others find it much harder to concentrate when there is background noise or music and if i am currently your background noise or music boo uh what happens to the passengers who are responsible for airplane diversions are they ever sued for the costs in crude it might be covered by insurance actually philip we didn't think of that did we sudoku how do they know what's going to be a hard sudoku to do and what's going to be an easy sudoku to do to do to do and what's the origins of the phrase or even the very idea of kangaroo courts? Uh, Ilona is in Chigwell. Ilona, question or answer? I have a question, please, James. Carry on, Ilona. Um, my little girl, Emily, actually wants to know if our cat doesn't know that she's having babies. So we thought we'll phone James and ask him. Well, not me. And the reason she wants to know is that the cat is still sort of doing everything she did before she was pregnant, like jumping off the greenhouse and jumping off the shed and rolling about. And my daughter's concerned about the baby. She's saying she must protect her, the baby, oh, surely. So, so, she's, she's, so do she's, animals not know that they are pregnant? Ooh, I, that is an interesting question. I mean, I, I think in terms of... Because the, 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 we're comparing human to to cat really and we're thinking that because human mums have to take extra special care when they're pregnant then we presume that i think emily just thinks cat mums do too but they obviously okay. don't they obviously don't they're just built differently well how do how do you know the cat's pregnant well she's quite visibly pregnant um she's she's quite large and she doesn't seem to know that she's quite large she's just carrying on business as usual they, but they really. must know because they prepare a place to give birth don't they often oh yes that's that's a good point so they so must maybe the question should be at what stage at do what they point stop? do they know i don't know I don't, let's find out i mean do cats know they're pregnant and if i mean they know something's about to happen because they usually make a little nest don't they or they go and go and sit some they might just feel awful ilona they might i mean it, you know they might just feel really ill before giving birth and then a little kitten comes out and they're as surprised as everybody else is <laughs> Exactly. So, yeah, we, we don't know. No, let's but find out. But she's very excited but, to phone James oh, while she's on holiday. Fantastic. Well, tell her not to worry about the cat jumping off the greenhouse because cat, pregnant cats have been doing that since time immemorial. <laughs> but we shall try and get a, an answer for Emily. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care and, and take care, Emily, as well. Look after your cat. 22 minutes after 12 is the time. Do cats know they're pregnant? Uh, and if not, how do... Well... Yeah, the bit at the end. They do, don't they? They do that, don't they? They make a little nest or something? I said, we've always had our cats neutered, so I don't know. Can't remember. Jenny's in Rochester. Jenny, question or answer? Good morning, James. It's Hello. a question, Carry please. On. Carry on. About, it's quite topical. About petrichor, that Ooh, lovely spell, um, love after it. a long, hot spell when it suddenly rains. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering why we don't get that glorious petrichor when we're watering the garden during a long, hot spell. Oh, so hmm. yeah, you're right. Um, it, it coming up from the soil. Just trying to think. Well, yeah, interesting. There was an item on Radio Four today that, this morning um, when they were talking Don't, about petrichor. Come, come on here and start plugging the opposition. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. You have to <laughs> but, say something um, like a. Somebody from the Met Office who was yes. saying that 
they're look at, there's a huge amount of research into petrichor at the moment. Yes. But some of what they've found out is that um, when it does rain after a long, hot period, um, or natural oils are released from plants, from dust, and all that sort of thing. Wow. Which helps towards that smell of petrichor, which was something I didn't know. No. So why can't we do it ourselves then? Why Indeed. can't we create it ourselves with a watering can or a hose when, yeah. we're, when we're allowed to use them? Exactly. I like that. I mean, maybe you can, and we just haven't noticed. It's, maybe it takes a real down. Do you get pet? You don't get petrichor after a light shower, do you? Not so much. There's uh, a slight hint of it. I I don't. Th- I think this is the the answer. Actually, it's going to be it's going to be scary because even if you've got your sprinkler on full pelt, it's nothing like yesterday's rain. No, we, we here, we haven't had many sort of heavy downpours. The first uh, watering we had was very, very light, and we had beautiful petrichor. Oh, did you? Oh, OK, there goes that theory. The beauties of Rochester. Oh, yes, indeed. It's also a beautiful word. It's not just a beautiful smell it's, or, and a beautiful phenomenon. It's a beautiful word as well. It's the hat it trick of beautiful, isn't it? No, I shall agree. Um, I ch- well, I shall try to find out for you. Thank you, Jenny. Why, why, why can't you make your own petrol? <laughs> 0345 606 0973. Uh, 24 minutes after. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions on the board now. No answers. Ooh. James is in Scarborough. James, question or answer? I've got an answer for you, James. Somewhere else I went on holiday as a child, actually. I was just running through them earlier. Morecambe, Filey, Blackpool, Scarborough. Scarborough and Filey would be the same holiday, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, we're only down the road. That's right. So my Uncle John had a little cottage in Filey. He had to put coins in the electricity meter to, t- to turn it on. Anyway, I digress slightly. Quick, <laughs> what, what, what would you like to answer? I want to answer the one about uh, background music and distraction. Fantastic. Um, so it's all to do with, with the dopamine pathway in the brain. And for certain brains, if, if we take ADHD, for example, as kind of the extreme end of the spectrum, where that, that constant need for dopamine by putting on certain background noises, music, kind of distracts the brain enough and, and gives that reward of dopamine to allow you to focus on, on other tasks. While people that kind of have greater dopamine regulation actually find that distracting because they're able to concentrate and get their need of dopamine from the task at hand. Well, I never... Is it re- so, and that would apply to varying degrees across the whole population. Not, not. It's not just relevant to neurodiversity. It's, 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 it's. I mean, it is a form of neurodiversity that you're describing, yeah. isn't it? And even to extreme cases with sleep as well, where, where some people actually um, their, their minds start to wander because um, they, they're not getting enough dopamine by by laying still and closing their eyes, so having background noise it distracts the brain enough to look, to go into that kind of sleep state. That's so interesting. I, what, I mean, I don't want to get too intimate about my own personal arrangements. Why would I find it much harder to sleep when I'm on my own? That's probably to do with, with safety as well sometimes, right. um, particularly people that have trauma in the past, for example, or even going into a, a new room. Yeah. Uh, people sleep sleep less on the first night um, than they, they do because the brain's sense. actually... But in just a, when my wife goes away, state. when my wife goes away, if I wake up in the night, I, I, I find it much harder to get back to sleep than I do when she's there. But anyway, that's... Does it change as you age? No, definitely not. Um, I'm, I'm in my 40s now and I, I do have ADHD. Um, I lecture in ADHD, that's how I know the answer. And, oh, fantastic. Um, I, uh, I, I, I still, that's why I was working this morning with yourself on in the background. Well, well, I'm very grateful that you were paying just enough attention to hear the question, James. And I think Wayne Rooney has a, used to have a hoover on when he, when he wanted to go he to sleep. He had to turn a vacuum cleaner on in the back. But that would be the same reason. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Brown, brown noise is, is very good, apparently, to help you sleep. Fantastic. You've already told us, but I shall ask you again. Qualifications? Uh, I, I lecture in your diversity, specifically ADHD, and uh, know obviously a lot about the dopamine pathway. Round of applause for James, the first of the day. Thank you, James. Great Thank stuff. Thank you very much. That's a really lovely answer, actually. Um, uh, let's jot that there. Niall's question, James's answer. Uh, Julia is in Virginia Water. Julia, question or answer? Uh, it's a question, James. Carry on. It is, why is a hot dog called a hot dog? Hot dog. That's a good, I can't believe we've never had that before. Usually when I say that, it turns out we have actually had that before. I'm just too old and doddery to remember. Why is a hot dog called a hot dog? It's my son that wants to know, because he's just about to have one. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like what, with a, what, what sort of sausage? A normal English breakfast sausage? No, or, no, no, or no. Frankfurt. An frankfurter, you've, you've got, was, yeah. You've got him a proper frankfurter? Yeah. That's nice. I love a hot dog. Did you know? I bet I. I don't know if you're. Where are you, Virginia Water? Did you have any Hermansy Germans in Virginia Water? <laughs> Do we have any? Have any hot? Hermansy German. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. <laughs> no, it was a, it was a, it was a little chain that had just started up before lockdown. Hermans the Germans, and they did bratwursts oh, no. and currywursts. Oh, no. I, I mean, really delicious. Uh, hot dogs but they went under they haven't reopened after after oh. lockdown they haven't oh what a shame so I was just thinking I'll have no. one I'll have one after the show because you've got my appetite going and then I remembered I can't it's because Hermann Z German is no more oh shame, it is a no, shame. These, are, these are just from the garden centre lovely why Why are they called hot dogs I, I should, the garden centre oh no <laughs> that's no there's a butch oh hang on hang on it wants his lump no, I'm just on the phone no, it's alright Virginia I'll wait I'll wait Julia <laughs> Go on, no, it's all right. The lad wants his hot dog, for heaven's sake. I'll call, give him his hot dog or I'll call social services. <laughs> it was my daughter. Oh, I see. All right, well, we shall find out. Why, why is a hot dog called a hot dog? That's, go, go and feed your children, you monster. It's coming up to half past 12. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. I, sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed this, sometimes I prolong the conversation because I think I know the answer and it might just pop into my head, I, 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 which makes me think we possibly have had that one before. It's also made me miss uh, Hermann Z. German again. Half past 12 is the time. Amelia Cox is here with your headlines. Mystery Hour with James O'Brien. This is LBC. It is 32 minutes after 12. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Uh, Paul's in Swansea. Paul, question or answer? Uh, answer, James. Carry on, Paul. It's the, the um, hot dog. Go on, that was quick. Go on. I should be getting loads of calls about the hot dog, so I hope you get this right. Go on. It was German immigrants going to the States. They brought their, their meat with them and the sausages. Right. And and the Americans thought, that looks like your German dogs. Dax hunt. Really? Yes. I don't think that's true. Oh, I disagree. I well, obviously, do. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't have rung in otherwise. I know. It's, it's, it's like the Germans. German butchers went yeah, but to the, the I mean, the, 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 I mean the, the Dachshund isn't a particularly German dog. Just because it's got a German name, you're just as likely to find your chihuahuas in Germany as you are at, at anywhere else. She probably no, they, they, they didn't they, call they it were... a hot dog because it looks like a Dachshund, Paul. Uh, oh, okay, I stand corrected if I'm wrong. Well, I, I just, I, I, think I, I'm I'm, right. I think, I think it is as 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 um as Julia's feared. I think it's because there were suspicions that it contained dog meat. Oh, okay. Anyway. I don't. Yeah, I just, well, uh, I, oh, this is awkward. I'm not going to give you a round of applause. They, they, they didn't call them hot dogs because they look like um. Dashens. Okay. All right. Sorry. What were your qualifications? Now he's going to say my great grandfather invented the hot dog, and I'm going to feel like a right Herbert. Go on. No, I, I'm a chef, and I, I love food, and I love history of food. And you and think, I, and you think you've heard this somewhere? Yes, definitely. But I don't definitely. think. I don't think it is. I don't think. I've worked is. in Germany as well. I asked the Germans why is it called a hot dog, and they said it's like the dog Dachshund. So did they? Well, yes. one German. You didn't ask lots of Germans. You just asked one German that. Well, I used to live in Germany. I worked in Germany. Yeah, I know, but you didn't ask many Germans why it's called a hot dog, <laughs> did you? You asked like one ham- German, and he it's gave like you a duff answer. It's like a hamburger. Why is it called a hamburger? There's no ham in it. Because it's from Hamburg. Because the butchers were in the World F- Food Fair in St. Louis, and they were making hamburgers. And they said, and they said to him, where are you from? And, they, and the butcher Hamburg. said, Hamburg. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the, the fellas over the other side of the hall were from Beefburg. <laughs> I'm not James, giving. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. You, you're <laughs> calling Ken busy. Thank you, Paul. Sean's in Maidenhead. Sean, question or answer? Answer, James. Carry on, Paul. Sean. It's an answer to the Kangaroo Court. Yes. So uh, this one is open to challenge. I oh, should no, say. It's the, all falling well, the, en- the, the entomology is, you know, it's, go on, it's, it's been kicking around for years, but uh, apparently it comes from uh, the Californian Gold Rush. Um, a lot of Australians rushed to California in the 1840s, yeah. and they claimed plots of land uh, to mine on. Right. And obviously, some people had their claims jumped. Yeah, so claim jumping was often something no. that was tried. No. Seriously, no. Well, I know Seriously. that everything you've said so far is true, but this is not leading us to kangaroo court. Jumping, hopping, kangaroos hop and jump. Uh, so it was a claim jumping, and that, but look, I mean, uh, uh, my my source is a fairly well known national newspaper, right? Um, you would call Donald Trump 
Um, not the first time he's claimed kangaroo courts, obviously, but the, the 2019, he was, I he was think, being I impeached. Think, I think you're almost right. But I suspect it's got more to do with the fact that so many Australians turned up for the Californian gold rush. That's what I said. I thought you said it was because they were jumping claims, like kangaroos jump fences. When they came, when they when they got to California and they claimed a plot of land, yes. someone else would come to California and claim the same plot, yes. and it was called claim jumping. Yes. Um, so, if, so when you went to court over a claim jump, it became known as a kangaroo court. Yeah, but that, it's because there's Australians are, are there. Yes. Right. That's what I said. Oh, yeah. okay. Is it? All right. Have a wrap. Well, qualifications. Oh, and, by, uh, and, and incidentally, okay. by the way, oh, yeah. incidentally, Steady. you owe me a game. What? You owe me a game. No, I don't. Well, I phoned, uh, yeah, you did. I phoned in on a postcode question, and you gave me and the other guy a game. And I ne- actually thought the game didn't exist. I thought it was just a joke. I didn't realise it actually was. Oh, a well, game. that's Schrodinger's game then, because because you <laughs> thought it that because you thought it didn't exist, you didn't get I, one. I thought it was a pretend game. How I, can I, I send you a game that you don't believe exists? Well, I believe it exists now. I saw it in John Lewis. Well, that's too late now. When you when I, when we sent it to you, you didn't believe well, it existed, so it never arrived. I'll have to hold out hope that I come up with another banging. Did, did, no, I'll put, I'll put you on the list. Did I honestly do this? Because I did miss a couple. It was, it, was, it was it was about the biggest postcode in England, yeah. and I I said I it was Inverness. It. Yeah. You've got a postman on, yeah, um, and I said, uh, and he was part time, and I said I'll defer to the part time postman. And you thought that was very funny. And you I said did. you can both have a game, and I thought, oh yeah, well, there isn't really a game, but nice I, one, I think thanks, I think James. you have actually. I mean, inadvertently stumbled into a philosophical vortex. I do think you're. <laughs> Failure, your failure to believe in the existence of the game actually explains why the game never arrived. So, what did you think when you saw it in John Lewis? I thought, oh right, it, it exists. <laughs> but how, how long had the game been out? When you, I remember the call, but I don't remember the exact time of I, it. I, 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 I don't go to John Lewis that often. I, you know, uh, middle, middle class. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I was, I was, I. I right, but I mean, how long it was... had it been out when you rang in? Good question. Don't know. Because I, I, I mean, I, I don't go shopping for. No, but what I mean is, how much? I mean, what? How long did you think I'd been lying about the existence of the game? Oh, I see. I thought it was. A, I just thought it was like you know an in joke. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, like a joke. Oh, you you win like the Keith. game. This week. Some people think Keith doesn't exist. I, I am wondering about whether Keith exists. Sorry, he's on Twitter. We've proved it. Fair enough, I'll take your word for it. All right. So, yeah, so I just listened. I thought the next time I get on, I'm going to mention it. Hope okay. you don't mind. No, fair enough. I'm going to consult my records. All right, but you can have a round of applause for now. I'll take that, I'll do. Nice one, James. Thank you, Sean. Well played. Good answer. Uh, Wendy's in Glasgow. Wendy, question or answer? It's an answer. Carry on. It's in relation to the airline question. Oh, yeah. Um, if, a pass, if an airline has to make an emergency landing or land somewhere other than an airport that it's not destined for, um, then yes, the passenger will be expected to pay the fuel costs. If they don't pay the fuel costs, they will be taken to court, and nine times out of ten, they will be they, the court will find in favour of um, of the airline. Will nearly always find in favour of the airline. What kind it's of also uh... got to do with landing charges? Wow. Um, as well, because um, if your if, if your airline. Um, I used to work in the airline industry beforehand, and the airline I worked for um, arrived at Glasgow Airport. Oh yeah. If I wonder the air, if an, the same airline had to do an emergency, I had to do a stop at Glasgow before it was due to land in Europe somewhere. Then the charge, the fine, route, the charge landing uh, fee would be smaller because that airline already landed into Glasgow Airport. But if the airline didn't have a contract with the Glasgow Airport, for instance, then the charge would be higher. Okay. I mean, that's pretty well comprehensive. And it also means as well, the, 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 air, the airline as well has also got to incur the cost of um, the crew that are supplied to come on and deal with that aircraft because the aircraft has also got to be refueled very often when it's at that airport. That's fine. You've already got a round of applause. Don't worry. What, um, what sort of price are they looking at? Oh, thousands. I mean, I... I, I but you've got some numpty. You've got some... I, I got some... a flight a few years back. Yeah. And we had to do just that. We, really? had, we were going pam and back from Spain. We I'm had to land in Nantes in France. Really? Because someone was kicking off? Taken to court. So someone was kicking off on the plane? 
Yeah, and it cost them, it went to court and it cost them over 20 odd thousand pounds, about 25, 28 thousand pounds. Oh, and they also, got hit with it. they also got hit with a lifetime ban. You, uh, because the, air, the, the, aircraft, the airline is losing money while it's sitting on that, air, well, not that ramp when it's not meant to be. So they've got to then wait for a slot as well. So it's the time that they're losing as well, as well as the actual cost of crew. Right, no, all good. I mean, you've answered pizza. Phillips. You've gone way beyond Philip's question, actually, Wendy, you've provided an incredibly comprehensive answer. What are your qualifications? I think you've already told us. I worked um, in the airline for several years, um, for about 10 years. There so you go. And also, you kept track of the numpty who disrupted your flight when you had to land in France that time. You followed yeah, the well, case. It was, it was, I, can't, I won't mention it for legal reasons, but yes, um, it, was, it was publicised in the press. Round of applause for Wendy, please. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. Great play. Well played. 12.42 is the time. Olaf is in Penzance. Olaf, question or answer? Answer. Carry on, Olaf. So for your weighing astronauts in space, mm. um, it comes down to the difference between weight and mass. So oh, yes. we talk about weight on Earth um, as if we're talking about mass and so we talk about it in kilograms. Kilogram is actually a measure of mass, which yes. is a fundamental property. So that doesn't change whether you're on Earth or in space or underwater yes. or anywhere, really. I understand. Um, so... I, as far as I understand, we learned about this in university, um, they have a device which experts a known force on you and then measures your acceleration using, I think, an optical sensor. And if you know the force in the acceleration, Newton's law tells us that force equals mass times acceleration. So we just divide force by acceleration. It, force, it will tell force you the mass. Over of F the over A. Force over acceleration will give you the mass. That's right, yeah. So then the mass, if they know the mass, they can put the calculation on the Earth's gravity and tell you what you would weigh if you were back on Earth. They could do the same with a bathtub, could they, in displacement? Yeah, so the, the, it's the same principle, effectively. Yeah. Your mass is constant, regardless of where you are on Earth or in that's space. A, I, that's actually quite a simple answer, and it, almost obvious, but it was a beautiful question as well, and I really like yeah. the answer. What are your qualifications? Uh, I've just graduated as an engineer, so we learned about a lot of this. I'll do nicely. I mean, you know, I'd rather have had an astronaut, Olaf. Well, give me a few years, I'll be up there. Good luck, man. Seriously, have a round of applause in the meantime. <laughs> That's a large course, that's I mean, still a lovely question. It's slightly less, uh, oh, wow, answer than perhaps some of us were expecting, but still, still a beautiful question. So that was Seth and Olaf. Uh, Dominic's in Tunbridge Wells. Dominic, question or answer? It's an answer, uh, or a second answer to you. So, um, actually, it does come from, hot dogs do come from Daxon, because in the 1900s at ball games, the vendors used to shout, come and get your red hots, your Daxon sausages. Um, And basically, there's a cartoonist who's called, I think, Todd Dorgan, and he couldn't spell Daxon. So when he did his captions for the baseball games, he would call, get your your hot dogs, and it just kind of stuck. Where did you get this from? Um, uh, sorry, I can... Where, where, where did you learn this? Uh, well, basically, I, re- I looked it up, not just now, but about seven, six, eight months ago, when I looked at it, because when I was reminded of the story when John Kelly he said, Ich bin ein Berliner, and he basically said, I'm a hot dog. So I kind of just went, I digged a bit more into the story, and that's kind of le- learned the origin of name. Why did you do that seven or eight months ago? Kennedy did that about 50 years ago. Sorry? <laughs> I yeah, think no, you... the story was years ago, but it, was, it just came up. So I've got a bad, bad one. Well, yeah, it sounds good to me. Over. I think that's earned you a round of applause. Thank you very much. No, thank you. 12.45 is the time. Mystery Hour on LBC with James O'Brien. It is 12.48 and you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. We've done really well. We haven't got the frozen bed question. We've done the music and focus. We've done the airplanes. We haven't done the Sudoku question. I'm not happy with the pregnant uh, cat or the kangaroo court questions yet, or indeed the petrichor questions, but we have now finished the hot dog questions. Um, some suspicions out there that the uh, you're not allowed to look anything up rules may have been breached by, un- I'm not going to identify or specify by callers earlier in the programme, but I would just remind you that everything must be taken on trust on this programme. And trust is a wonderful thing. Andrew's in Croydon. Andrew, question or answer? Uh, it's a question, please. Yes. A Berliner is a donut, isn't it? Not a hot dog, anyway. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, carry on, carry on, carry on. Well, we're keeping it on food. We are. It's about, it's about crisps. Is it? I like crisps. Uh, that was uh, a, quite I love partridgey. Crisps. I bet I like crisps more than you do. When did you last eat a bag of crisps? Uh, yesterday, so but I am due a few packs today. Right, okay. What 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 are you going for? What's your what's your what's your 
what's your poison at the moment? Uh, it's always McCoy's. Is it, oh, okay, serious business then. Fair enough. I've yes. Seabrook. I've got my. I found a place that does Seabrook's prawn cocktail now, which is my childhood favourite, and now I can buy it in London. I'm quite pleased about that. Anyway, uh, where were we? Them a go. Yeah. Well, my my question is really about the the difference between the crisps when you get like the nice seventy gram grab bag. Yes. And the multi packs. Oh yeah. So I'll have a, uh, a you go between the two in the in the crisp cupboard for the kids. Yeah. And I will always go for the seventy gram grab bag first because I am sure that the crisps are tastier, crunchier, and better. But every time I say it, everyone laughs at me. But I, I'm sure of it. So I, I essentially want to know: is there a different line? Is it the same crisps in these bags? Is it the same crisps in the big bags that it yeah. is in the multi packs? I don't think it is, and uh, I can't find the answer anywhere. I'm not surprised on the second bit of that. I mean, it's it's not not yet a well established area of academic research. Is, is it is it is it going to be that you get a bigger crisp, a less broken crisp in the bigger bag? Well, there's not that much difference between those bags. It, it, it it's flavour. It's really it's kind of everything. not crunch yeah, factor. Definitely. Really, you think they actually taste better? It's not the fact that because because a really nice unbroken round crisp just plays on the tongue better than for a, the same amount of crisp broken into four pieces, doesn't it? I think it Well, does. no, if you, if you get to the bottom of a crisp bag yes. and you get those last few bits and you kind of dip your fingers in and it's really salty and, and you get really a lot of flavour, you'll, you'll definitely get more... Um, just get more flavour throughout. That's the way I can describe it. No, and I okay. always say it to people. But that might be the amount of flavouring that's in the bag. Yeah. right? So, I mean, just is it the same crisps? Yes, I just, I, I just don't, I even like the, the first question. one, when you take them out, you get that kind of, you yeah. know, when your cheeks right. kind of go, mm. Yeah, oh yes, do I. Is there, do is I. there a different line? Mm. I would have thought actually watered, line My mouth actually space. watered then, because I did a full yeah. imagination of that first bite of crisp. I went for a McCoy. I haven't had McCoy's for a while. I would go for the cheesy ones, personally. You're a flame-grilled well, steak man, I think, Andrew. Uh, I'm, I'm a salt vinegar man, plain oh. grilled steak, uh, all of them, to be honest yeah, with you. But, um, What's not to like? It's a McCoy. I, can, I compare it to um, where I worked before, where we would have five packs, 30 packs, and 90 packs of a particular product. Yeah. And I know they all came off the same line. Yeah. But I just don't feel that Chris come off the same line. They've got a different one for the multi packs. There's a lot. Anyway. Of, there's a lot. I mean, there's quite a lot of support for you coming in via text. I completely agree with Crisp Man. There is a difference between the two. And Nate, who's in Torbay, says, I agree with the caller. Big bags have better flavour. Yeah. Let's and, find and, out. Yeah. Well, it might be physics. Okay. It might It might not be chemistry. It might be that the, the, the bags, the bigger bags, some, I don't know, flipping out. Do, do you get different crisps in multi-packs from what you get in big bags? 03456060973. Kieran's in Rotherham. Kieran, question or answer? It's a question, sir. Carry on. So, vinyl players, um, we all, well, most people know that it's a vinyl player is just like a needle with a small diamond at the end. Diamond? I'm sure it's a diamond. I might be wrong. It's not going to sure be a diamond, is it? Because that would cut everything. I know, but, well... Well, maybe it would. The more cocky I sound when I say things like that, the more embarrassed I am five minutes later when someone points out that the caller was right and I was wrong. I know, but I could be wrong. But all anyway, right. regardless of the fact, the question is, yes. um, is how does that... So let's say diamond, for example, yeah. just by scraping in the vinyl, create the noise of the multi-track recording. Because that's how it was recorded as well. Yeah, well, I, but what, what I mean is the actual process. So the I mean, needle, the, yeah, so what you get is you get a wax disc, right? Mm -hmm. And you start playing your music. Yeah. And the wax disc turns around and the and the stylus bumps up and down. Yeah. On a, making the echo of the noise that it's hearing uh -huh. and then you let the wax disc dry and you put it on a back on the spinning wheel which has now got a horn coming out of it even before electricity but you'd have been able to do this you could have had a hand wound turntable and you put the needle on it and it, it reproduces the patterns that were and grooved into the disc in the first place, and it goes up through the big horn and comes out sounding like music. It's never going to sound like it did in the room where it was in the room where it happens, where it was recorded. Oh, of course, but what I mean is, how do these patterns hold this music? Hold this? It's vibrations, right? 
It's, you, you're, you're, you're looking for someone a bit cleverer than me, aren't you, Kieran? Uh, Don't be shy, is mate. That possible? Yeah, is that possible? Well, very. I like your comeback. I got fair play for that. But you, you want someone who who is kind of answering it rather than just working it out. Yeah. As for we sure. go. All right. Well, where are we? Twelve fifty-four. You'll be lucky. I've given you. I've given you the best shot. I mean, that is what happens. But you want someone who explains it from a slightly more informed and knowledgeable sounding base. Um, how do record players work? Essentially, was the question. And the crisps. Uh, Adams in Seaham in County Durham. Adam, question or answer? Hi, James. It's the answer about the crisps. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, let's go. Right. Um, what it is, the grab bags are a much substantially larger bag. Yeah. Um, and so what's happening is the the, the the particles in the bag that create the flavour for your taste buds, when it comes to taste, about 60 70% of it is actually due to the sense of smell as opposed to taste buds. And so the larger the bag, the more particles can actually get into your nose and stimulate your olfactory cortex. Um, and so the smaller the bag, the less particles can do that. It's kind of the same principle with wine and wine glasses. Yeah. The more nose something has, then the better the smell it is. So it's the, the amount of air from the bag that can actually get into your nose that causes a more intense flavour. I love it. So it's actually invisible crisp flavour. Yeah. Going up your nose. So if you yeah. were to, and in, and in fact, he can do himself an experiment, can't he? You could do a grab, but could use bowls, ceramic bowls. Yeah. And see if he could tell the difference. Exactly. But when you're actually or eating even, out of the bag... Or, or Yeah, or even switch, um, get some plastic bags from, you know, the, the Ziploc bags. Yeah. Stick some crisps in all uh, from uh, a multi-pack and stick some crisps, crisps in a different one from a, a grab bag. Um, as long as they're the same type of crisps and the yeah. Ziploc bags are the same size, there should be no difference in sensation. So, I, I mean, I love this answer because there is a difference in taste... But there is not a difference in crisp. Exactly. Whoa. Qualifications? I'm a senior lecturer in human physiology at the University of Sunderland. That'll do nicely. Round of applause for Adam. <laughs> Thank you. And do, I mean, crisps make up a big part of the curriculum, do they? Um, uh, old faction does. Yeah. No, I mean, that makes. I <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Uh, John's in Derby. John, question or answer? It's an answer, James. Carry on. It's the petrichor question. Oh, yes. Um, it's to do with the size of the rain droplets. Ah. The, um, if it's a small rain droplet, it smells a lot stronger. Yeah. And um, it was the, the term petrichor was actually coined by two Australian climatologists in, uh, in the 1960s. And it stands for uh, Petra is obviously. No, I, I know that. Sorry, I don't want to sound. Yeah. I, I knew that. No, I'm just sorry. interested in why I can't reproduce it with my garden hose. It, it's to do with the size of the rain droplets. So um, if, I, if I could, if I could, if it's it, very fine mist, then you could do it. it. You can do it, yeah. And it's because it evaporates high into the atmosphere, and then when it comes down as a fine light rain, it uh, it's easier to to smell. You can do it with with. Um, Larger rain droplets, but it's not as noticeable. That's a beautiful answer. Round of qualifications? Um, I read it yesterday. Really? Yeah, that, I read it in the newspaper. That'll do. Which newspaper? I think it was the Daily Mirror. Round of applause for John. Thank you. Uh, Roland's in Detroit in Michigan. Roland, how are you? I've only got a minute. Make it sing. So, yes, it is a diamond. The diamond sits in the, in the groove of the record. There's only one groove per side. And the deeper the groove, the louder the music. Strawberry Sunday reunion, <laughs> September. <laughs> Qualifications, DJ of 30 years standing and promoter of the famous Strawberry Sunday night in South London. Is that right? Thank you. Yeah, round of applause for Roland. Yep. Hang on. Max, Max in Brighton. Quickly, Max, question or answer? Uh, a theory about sliced bread. Um, a theory? A th yes. Oh, we haven't got time for theories. Sheila Fogarty's here now. I've only got time oh, for definitive sorry, answers. Well. No, that's all right. Don't worry. I've got to pick a winner anyway. I'm going to give it to Kate, 
who at the Sudoku, she didn't get an answer, but she can have a board game, just because I thought that was a highly enjoyable conversation. And her deployment of high register sound effects when expressing surprise about something was utterly charming. So Kate gets the game. We've got that. Have you written that down? Everybody happy? Can I go now? Thank you. Sheila Fogarty's next. I agree about Kate. I was listening upstairs and yes. I and my producer were going, oh, isn't she lovely? That's exactly really why she's like got the board. That's yeah, why yeah. she's got so the board worked, game. Yeah. Oh, we oh, love fantastic. Kate as well. We're fantastic. so glad. We're so glad she's got what she's got what she deserves. Yes. 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 She's got what she deserves.